a wonders of the world. So many wonders to behold. So many questions in my mind. So many questions, so little time. Answers so so easily come. Unless you know to ask someone who is a master of the trade. Ask them how clouds get their shape. Welcome to What the Heck is That with David Shaventura. Hi everyone, we have a great show for you today. Our guest today is someone you might recognize from an earlier episode. Richard Stiller was on the show before talking with me about his organization, The Mankind Project. This time around, I want to focus on the man himself and find out where he get his inspiration. I like that everyone can learn something from a guy like Richard So Let's get the interview started. David, it is so great to see you. Thank you for having me back. Uh, this is like one of the high points of my career is to, is to be interviewed by you. And I really mean that because I, a lot of people get to see it and it's really great to see you again. So I hope you're doing well. Thank you. How did you know you were made to do this good work that you do? Well, um, uh, I'm, I'm a rather old person and I've only been doing this for a short while. I, I really didn't know that I was made to do this. I thought I was made to do other things like um, raise a son. I did that, be married. I did that, I'm still doing it, still doing both. But um, I saw that there was, uh, the, that the planet is really screwed up and um, I couldn't sit by and not do anything. So I thought, Maybe I am made to do something about it. And uh, so I'm, I'm doing something about it. Don't worry, Richard. I think it is safe to say you have made art for that time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, thank you, David. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we're, uh, 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 my uh, organization, Mankind, is we're doing a lot. And yeah, we are making up for a lot of lost time. And we're getting other people involved who also want to make up for lost time. I mean, it, it's great to just, you know, live your life, listen to music, um, have raise a family, but at some time you have to just say that um, I can't just sit idly by and not do anything and you, and you do something. How did you actually know how to help a plumber when you see one? Well, uh, you know how to help a problem because no one else is doing anything. Um, it all started off when my mother was uh, at a, uh, a hospital that was run by the motion picture industry and they wanted to close the hospital down. It was a nursing home. And there were very few people that were standing up for the elderly people. So I knew um, this was something that I wanted to do. So I knew that, um, that when, when there is a need and there is a problem, somebody's got to step in and do something about it. And usually I step in maybe a little late because I don't see anyone else stepping in. So that's what I do. I, I, I see that there's a problem and um, no one else is doing anything about it. So I figure, you know, what the hell, I'll do something about it. I will have to remember that for the next time I face a plumbums. Well, I, you're listen, David. You're you're doing it. You're doing it right now with with the show and with these interviews. I think that you're uh, you're recognizing that there's a problem in the world, and you're bringing the people that you know into uh, into this interview, and you are working on the problem. So so yeah, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Thank you. What motivates you? What motivates me? Well, you know, it's a little selfish because um, it makes me feel good to work on these problems. It makes me feel good to give a homeless person food. 
because that homeless person, he doesn't pay for it, of course, but he does look at you and he says, uh, God bless you. And uh, I've been around a lot of people, rabbis and priests and people who are supposedly speak for God, and nobody says it more earnestly than a person who is needy, who gets help, and they say it to you with such honesty and sincerity that it makes me feel good, and that's why I do it. I do it because all this stuff makes me feel good, and other people need to have a, 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 other people need to have these problems uh, solved. I know that feeling. I get it from doing these shows. I know you do. I know you do, and it's great to watch. It's great to watch uh, when you interview all of these different people because. Um, you do, uh, I can tell that you get a lot of pleasure from it, and that's what it's all about. If we didn't have fun, then we wouldn't be doing this. I mean, I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't do what I'm doing if it wasn't fun. It's a lot of fun, and I get a lot of pleasure from it. What is your favorite mantra or saving that really motivates you? Oh, yeah, you know what? I was, the, there's a saying from, a Beatles song, it's called All You Need Is Love. And the saying is, there's nothing you can do that can't be done. Nothing you could sing that can't be sung. To me, that's, uh, that is a great saying because there's so many things in the world that need something. And if you wanna do something, it's out there for you to do. So there is nothing that can be done that can't be done. Well, there is something for the audience to think about. I like that a lot. Good, good. When we uh, when we get together after COVID and we start jamming, we'll play that song. You can teach me how to play it because you know how to play the drums and all I need is a beat and then we're, we're off. Let's do it. How do you not get burned out from what you do? Um, I'm not sure I know what burnt out means because um, I'm usually exhausted. I'm usually um, fed up. And even though, like I say, we're having fun. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's hard not to get burnt out, but it's burnt, getting burnt out sometimes is a state of mind. And if I was burnt out, I wouldn't be doing this. So um, the best way not to get burnt out, I think, is to enjoy what you do. And I enjoy what I do. So I'm not getting burnt out. And if I do get burnt out, my wife tells me to go to bed. I get it for me. It's cheaters, but I am learning how to manage better. Well, I, time management, and then you're going to have to teach me about time management because uh, uh, my time is, is not very well managed. How do you decide what causes you can help with? That's a really good question. Let's see. I, uh, from my experience, uh, if, it, if it impacts my life, then I make the decision that uh, I want to help with it. Uh, on, we are going to be doing a show on racism, and I, and I know that as a Jewish person growing up, I know that um, there were things that happened that I didn't like that was bullying and, you know, and religious intolerance. And I pass a homeless person in the street during COVID and like there's no one around and they need handouts from people in the street and there's no traffic. And so how are they going to get fed? So I, so I know from what I see where the need is. And I know that um, I can do it and I have a lot of friends who I can ask to help, and these friends usually help me. So, so it's it's what I see. It's uh, they call it empirical. It's what I see that motivates me, that tells me you need to do something about this. I need a mission statement. <laughs> That's another thing you can help me with. I need to help me write a mission statement. And now if you can write a grant, David, and you probably could, I think I'll hire you. We don't pay much though. 
Wow, what a great start to the interview. I feel like we all are learning so much. Make sure you come back next week for part two. Thanks for tuning in. What the heck is that? Wonders, oh wonders of the world. So many wonders to behold. So many questions in my mind. So many questions, so little time. Answers so so easily come. I let you know to ask someone who is a master of the trade. Ask them how clouds get their shape. Welcome to what the heck is that with David Shaventura?